Hey everyone, my name is Carly and uh, it's been a while, but I have not forgotten about you two. I'm just lazy and busy, but it's January something now and I really did want to film a uh, end of the year 2018 favorites, not so favorites, goals, list videos. So I'm going to do that today. Today we're going to start off with, I think, my most disappointing slash worst reads of 2018. I have six books on this list and a seventh one, which was a DNF. And so we're going to talk about those books. And they're not in any particular order. It was just I copied everything onto my computer and then went through the list and recopied everything that was like disappointing or that I didn't like. Um, so yeah, let's, l I'm gonna start. So the first one I have on here is War Cross by Marie Lu. I gave this a two out of five. I did not like this book at all. I'm pretty sure I talked about it in a wrap up at some point, but this follows this girl who's a computer hacker and in this world, basically this virtual reality is like, Big. like everyone has these glasses and everyone participates and she hacks herself into like the biggest competition ever and then joins the competition to root out this other hacker thing. I did not like the writing. I did not like the, the world was so confusing to me um, and the characters were so bland and one-sided and there is a twist that I did call very early on in the book. It was not surprising to me and I will not be continuing on with this series. I, yeah, it was not good. So the next one I have on this list is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I gave this a three out of five. This one falls under the more disappointing category. I feel like Neil Gaiman someone that's really talked up and this was the second book of his that I've read that I was not a huge fan of. Um, American Gods follows our main character is he teams up with basically all these different gods to stop this giant war from happening. I think it's pretty much what happened. Um, it's been a while and like I said, it, was, it wasn't was very memorable to me. I found all the men to just be creepy old men. The main character was had no personality, like they, he could have been anyone. And all the women just seemed to be there for sex. It was, it, yeah, I mean, it's rated as high as it is kind of because in some aspects, I did like Neil Gaiman's writing, but the storytelling plot elements of it and character development was not great. It was not there for me at all. I can't believe I finished the book because it's a huge ass book, but like it was just, it was not for me. Next one I have on my list is Summerland by Michael Caban. Caban, I never figured out how to say his last name. I originally rated this a three out of five, but when I was making my list, I did downgrade this to a 2.5. This follows one character and he like travels through worlds and has to play baseball and deals with Norse gods. And, um, and it's supposed to kind of take place in the Pacific Northwest. Honestly, all of those things sounds like such a winner of a book for me. And this was so boring. <laughs> that book was so boring. Again, this falls under the more disappointing category. I was so surprised at how bored I was reading this, how I didn't care about any characters. Um, I feel like the world was good enough for me in the sense that I am familiar with the Pacific Northwest area, so I tend to like anything set in that area, regardless of whether I think the book is good or not. But no one seemed to have very much personalities. It was like a, it was a huge book of nothing. Next one on this list is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertelli. Uh, this was definitely more of a disappointing read. Like the longer I thought about, the more I was disappointed by it. This follows Leah from Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and during her senior year of high school dealing with crushes and um, things. <laughs> stuff. Teenage contemporary book-esque stuff. I think I originally gave this a 4 out of 5, but when I realized I brought it down to 3.5. Um, it was fine and all, but it did feel a lot more rushed than the previous two books Becky Albertelli has written did, and that ending was so rushed. Like, you build up, that should be the tippy top of the point, and suddenly the book ends. It's It was a very abrupt ending, which 
is why I think it was so disappointing because that just felt it was so abrupt that it ended like it did and when it did and everything that happened and that made it feel very rushed and things didn't feel quite as developed as in the other books which helps which adds to the this book feeling like it was rushed to be written and published so that's unfortunate but Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens in Jojo, great book. Love Simon, great book. I love Simon, great movie. That was such a cute movie. And The Upside of Unrequited was very cute as well. Next one I have on my list is The Price Guide to the Occult by Leslie Walton. This follows our main character and has to do with witches and again takes place in the um, Pacific Northwest. I've definitely talked this about this before. The cover and everything like outside of this book is absolutely gorgeous it is beautiful i would want to own that book just to have it look pretty on my shelf because that'd be the only thing i'd be doing in my room on my, my books is looking pretty because that's all it has going for it in my opinion <laughs> um i originally gave this a three out of five which is very nice of me um i brought it down to 2.5 out of five but really right now i'm thinking it's more like a two out of five so leslie walton has a way with world because I did read The Strange Case of Eva Lavender a couple months ago and one thing I really really liked in that book and in this book was Leslie Walton's ability to create this great atmosphere but that's all I liked. Um, again and like this one none of the characters were exciting to me um, they all felt very one note the world was Fairly, could be fairly confusing to me and there's a romance that was insta-love and I hate insta-love so this was very much a letdown especially considering the fact that it takes place in the Pacific Northwest and then I felt like the atmosphere of it was very well done but everything else was not was not it was not great and the last one on here that I had that is um that was that I fully read was The Gentleman's Guide to the Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee and this was definitely a disappointment. Yeah I gave this a three out of five stars. This follows the main character as he's going on like basically a gap year throughout Europe and shenanigans happen with his best friend and his sister and it takes place in like the 1800s or 1700s, 18th century, something like that and the main character is by and in love with his best friend and his best friend is mixed race i think that was so it has all that going for it and when it came out this thing was hyped beyond belief so i'm sorry about the lighting it's cloudy sun thing okay anyway this book was hyped beyond belief like when it first came out everyone and anyone was talking about it and everyone and anyone loved it i read it about a year later and I was sorely disappointed. It just, it wasn't like bad per se, but it wasn't as exciting as I was wanting it to be. And it wasn't as, said here, the writing seemed to be verging on more middle grade versus YA. I think this was considered more YA, um, but the writing style of it made me think more of like Rick Riordan, which is not bad, but that was not what I was expecting from this book. The one book that I DNF'd, um, was the Terranauts by T.C. Boyle. <sighs> so this book was supposed to be about, well it is about, this group of characters who are going to go live in this these biodomes for a while. Things, and it's supposed to be some study test to see how well humans can live in these environments if we need to go off of earth um i think it's based off like true experiments i haven't done much looking into it but holy crap let me i'm using it but give me a second here <laughs> things have changed a little because i was using this book as a uh to help hold up the camera um but i got yeah i think i only got about 30 ish pages into this book before i just had to put it down because there was already a couple times like you have three characters that you're following two are girls and one is male and so different chapters are from those different characters point of views this book is massive the writing is tiny and i swear to god this author has never met a woman before <laughs> like one of the it's all in 
first person based on which character you are reading from and it starts off with one of the woman characters and she like goes on some long thing about her hair I think it was it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever read and then she also starts doing the whole comparison thing versus her versus another girl who's that pretty bitchy girl um and I was not here for that it. <laughs> then we got to the guy and let's see if I can find what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Here, this is this is what made me click. It was page 38. And E, her face aglow with the light of the candles and their golden globes and her hair shining and her breast pushing at the fabric of her dress till you could see the outline of her nipples become became the foundation of the whole of the whole new way of thinking. I'm sorry. No. And it, it just yeah, it was it was it was just not good. I couldn't do it. I, I could not put myself through that. So <laughs> DNF this book, so I can't really give it a uh, rating. But oh, I am not, I do not believe I will ever pick up this book ever again. That is, I couldn't do it. So yeah, those were my most disappointing slash least like slash DNF books of 2018. Keep a lookout for my top reads and my goal video uh, and I will try to keep things updated but life <laughs> but anyway thank you guys so much for watching if you liked what you saw please leave me a comment like subscribe whatever and I will see you guys again with another video bye hey, no, no, no.